<laughs> so is it rolling? It's rolling. It's working? It's working. Man. It's, it's on. It's on. We, we got a picture. They can't even hear you. Dude, what is going on right now, dude? You are like running around as if you're a headless chicken. I've never done this before, bro. What do you mean? <laughs> this is the third time. Guys, welcome to oh, the yeah. third ever episode of the Wild TSI podcast. My name is Jono. My name is Tim. And uh, like we said last week, this is undeniably the hottest podcast to hit the internet waves. Coming in hot, baby. Coming oh, yeah. in hot. Let's go. Let's go. Number three, man. We made it. Number three. Let's keep it moving. You know, we got some controversial uh, feedback on the last episode. Oh, man. What did they say? Controversial, dude. Controversial. Because what, they were what, what upset we because I, I was complaining. I said to all the Americans that I had a problem with the sports that they played, that I had a beef. We saw some comments that came in, some feedback, some personal messages that came in over the past week, and people were pretty upset with uh, what I had to say. Cold, cold. What'd you tell them? What'd you tell them? Well, I didn't really know what to say. I mean, <laughs> I, I brought it up to you today because you walked into the house wearing the colors of the Browns. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Cleveland Browns, bro. And you actually told me you've had this sweater for like 20 years or something. Just about, man. Just about. It's a it's an old school uh, vintage Ruben Drones jersey. Damn. Number uh, 34. Number 34. Only the real ones know about Ruben hey, Drones. That's a significant year, bro. That's, that's creeping up on you, huh? Oh, man. Oh, 34. Yeah, it's coming up soon, man. Sooner than uh, I thought it would be, man. Man, it's right here. <laughs> Before I but, ask you about this shit, I do have to tell the story last night. We were driving. Uh, Tim and I decided to head out to just, you know, show show our face around Los Angeles. Just had to get out for a sec, you know. I got some new drip this week. Hey. I told Tim I wanted to show <laughs> off the drip. And hey. we actually hit a milestone in the whip. Oh, yes. Oh, man. The whip. Yes. Um, she hit 248,000 miles. Two hundred. And 48,000 miles. I think we worked it out. And like, please guys, remember, we're not mathematicians or statisticians. No. It was like 171 days. Yes, on the road driving. And I put those miles on. Damn, dude. Yeah, and you, you had that brown sweater the whole time. The whole time. Oh, yeah. Oh, the brown sweater. That's been with me since... Uh, the car before that one <laughs> yeah man <laughs> wait so then there was a car before the whip oh yeah the legend bro the true legend the legend of the black panther the black panther aka an uh 1998 honda civic damn so you've always been loyal to honda eh? honda man they just keep going and going damn i love it i told you why i don't like hondas wait wh- why is it i forgot where i me. It had to do with an ex that had a Honda. Oh, yeah. And since then, I can never see Hondas the same. They really <sighs> lost me as a customer. Oh, man. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. But they're so reliable, bro. They just keep going. Well, kind of like the Browns, right? Oh, yeah. <sighs> I mean, I've heard mixed. <laughs> 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 yeah. Damn, dude. You can't be doing your team dirty like that, bro. Reliably bad. You can't be letting the Browns <laughs> down like that, bro. They let me down about? for 18 years. 18 of 18 those years? 18 unfortunate years, bro. 18? I pretty much had that jersey since the beginning. 18 years, Tim? 18, 18. And it's, That's a whole life, bro. And they have not won anything. Some people are considered <laughs> adults in 18 years, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, yeah. Wait, but that means you only started supporting them when you were a teenager. Yep. So why did you start supporting the Browns? My dad was watching them a lot, and I finally like started watching it with him. And I was like, okay, this is actually kind of cool. But you mentioned <laughs> to me that you didn't even play football seriously, even though you look like you're both like a... Oh, yeah. Like a like a linebacker for sure. Oh, linebacker! That's Lineman. what he said. <laughs> who's, 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 who's the who's the dude? Who's the dude that's at the front that just takes the hits? Like he's a prop in rugby. Um, the center? No, big defense. Defense. Uh, let's see, middle linebacker. Listen, man, I don't see linebacker. you. I don't see you as on the attacking size, bro. I've seen on defense. I've seen you try walk up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> that you were complaining about in the last episode. Hey, it was a serious hill, though. Listen, you were complaining about Yo, the hill. You would be out the... of breath. Listen, bro, I wouldn't trust you, bro. If I if I was going to be the quarterback and I was going to throw the ball, I would probably aim backwards because I know <laughs> that you wouldn't be in front of me. <laughs> hey, that would be a good move. That's the lateral. There you go. 
Go ahead, pitch it out. <laughs> it would be the only b- person that gets passed backwards to you in football is if you were in the attacking side. Let's go. I would pass back far. <laughs> I'd be he's like, Tim, a, you're running out there the wrong way, Tim. Other way, Tim, you must run the other way. <laughs> I'm like, they're cheering me on. It's the opposite team. So, <laughs> <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> So, have you ever scored a touchdown? Oh, yeah, I've scored a touchdown. Oh, oh yeah. Bullshit. Oh, man. You know, I actually used to play, like, um, it's funny because it's Thanksgiving time. And back in the day, I used to play Turkey Bowl. Turkey Bowl is our made up, like, football thing, but it's a pretty popular thing. We would just basically have all your friends meet together at the high school field, and we'll all just kind of take turns just uh, scoring touchdowns on each other because we were that good. Okay, so <laughs> so did you tackle each other? Oh yeah, it was tackle. It was no pads, just tackle. Uh-huh. Um, we let's see. So when we had like a full team, it was actually a lot of fun. We had like able the ability to have eleven on eleven, but um, yeah, most of the time we'd be like maybe seven sevens on seven. Damn, dude. So yeah. what what was your number, dude? Like what if 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 TB had a number, what would that number be? Ah. Uh, Probably in the thirties, I would say probably in the thirties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like the 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 ones that are like you know the single digits. That's like quarterbacks a lot of times, and oh. like double digits early, like the teens. That's like the diva wide receivers and like <laughs> uh, quarterbacks sometimes. But I'd be in the thirties. You know, thirties is like a nice working class type of number. That's like the running backs, the halfbacks, forties even, forties even, <laughs> like maybe like forty, forty four, number forty four, TB. <laughs> Let's go. That's Lewis Hamilton's number in uh, Formula One, number 44. Number 44? Number oh, yeah. 44. Okay, okay. That's the sport I know about. Hey, they were just here in Las Vegas. Yeah, they were here in Las Vegas. They made me stay up late. I actually fell asleep. I hate to say it. I tried to watch the whole race, guys. I fell asleep. Oh, man. It was very late. It started at like midnight. And they just zoom around Vegas at midnight? That's, that's a scary they, proposition. They had, to, they had to close down like the whole city to, to make it work. So if you were on the East Coast, I think the race started at like 1 a.m. Wow. You know, they had like, a lot of controversy this year. Apparently. Yeah, a ton of controversy. Well, I mean, they needed some controversy because the man Max was just winning everything. So we needed <laughs> some drama in our lives. Oh, man. You know, every year they bring out the, the Drive to Survive series on Netflix. Mm. Is there something similar about football on netflix where, where they follow a quarterback or oh, yeah, yeah they do of course they do i mean i've never watched it i don't understand uh, it, but. hard knocks hard it's knocks? not on netflix but i think it's hbo but yeah they just follow a team through preseason and all their their whole entire season um starting from training camp and it'll be like i don't know so proper for football oh, wow it was cool though dramatic kind of get like the back end you get like the the back perspective of like football operations so you'll see what it's like for a player to actually go through training camp, you'll see what it's like, like preparation. Maybe not like the whole thing, but you'll see team meetings and you'll see like, um, or you'll hear like coaches' thoughts and players' thoughts on certain things. And it's just kind of cool. You kind of track a team and then like their real season, you know, you'll watch it on TV, but then you can see hard knocks and you can hear all the behind the scenes. But even you, like you're deep in the league too. Like you, you, you got this like, superstar online squad i mean i i couldn't even take you we couldn't even go out last night here we are sitting at a bar and tv's just on his phone looking at football stats had to make sure i was was like you had all day to look at your football stats but now here we are at this cool little bar you know (laughs) no but you got tv's there i'm looking at he's like oh man i just have to look at this oh wow i'm like tim see everything's like midnight right (laughs) now dude you've had all day to look at your damn stats bro you know i was on the east coast before and it was a lot easier, I think, because uh-huh. I could um, like watch and track everything in real time. But now everything's like pretty late, and the games start really early. Like one o'clock games start at ten a.m. If you're watching football, you mean that's so, really early? It's not really early, but it's it's early for fantasy though. Damn, hitting the snooze button in the wanna, morning. You gotta get up at ten a.m., dude. I don't want to wake up and think about my lineup. I want to have it set. <laughs> And ready to go. So how long have you had this fantasy team for? How long has this oh, been man. going for? You've been rocking probably, let's see. Uh, it's probably been over, yeah, definitely over 10 years. Maybe over like, 10 years with the like same years. with the same people? Same folks, yeah. So who, dude, call them out right now, dude. Oh, because man. You, they need to like, we need to send this to them, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. want you to call them out, bro, and let them know. 
Hey, shout out Window Lickers 85. Shout out Brindo. Shout out Driscoll. Shout out Jordan. Everybody, yo. Uh, let's see. Ian. And tell them how you're going <laughs> to dominate them, bro. Oh, yeah. Well, I just kind of, uh, uh, it's not looking too good right now. Oh, man. come on. But you can't say yeah. that to him. This is not the time to be, <laughs> this is the problem with you. This is when you're supposed to be ferocious right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll speak on Tim's behalf. Listen here, mother. Yes. This man's been <laughs> wasting my time, bro. Hey. I called him over here today to do work. Here he is sitting behind me looking at football, doing nothing. He's pretending. You know when people will have their mouse that moves to show people they're working and they're not actually working? This mother <laughs> watching football and he's losing too. So you can all get Hey, but LeBron was there. Please remember to Le- LeBron was there. out all of this. LeBron was there. We got a But LeBron. LeBron wasn't there supporting. LeBron was the Rams. What are you no, talking wasn't. about? He said my Browns are in town. Oh, f- you. Doesn't LeBron play for? Um. Yeah. Well, then why would he be f-ing the Browns? He's a Cleveland guy. Well, Ohio <laughs> guy. He's a Northeast Ohio about? guy. He, he was bro. born and raised he, in Northeast he, Ohio. He, he was cool. in the Hollywood Hills, bro. Oh, Los yeah. Angeles, bro. He caught. He got the roles, bro. Drove over in L.A. Snoop Dogg in the car, bro. <laughs> you think he's gonna be? The Rams when he, I mean the, the oh, yeah, Browns. Of course he, yeah, of course he loves the Browns. He hates to see it. He he changed. He used to be a, a <laughs> fan. Dude, I just need to just cool down there for a second, bro. That's just <laughs> yo, I feel winded after that, bro. Right, right. Get me all passionate, bro. Oh, You're man. the type of person that really pisses me off sometimes, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Let's go. Sometimes Pour I meet on people me. that just really make me angry. Pour it bro. on me. Come on. You make me, dude. I was having such a good day, bro. <laughs> Boom, and I ruined it. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> Eeyore's storm cloud just <laughs> you <laughs> ruined it it's with true. my losing my losing ass football team the losing ass football Damn. team ah man what a year like, so, so okay so did you guys did you guys win today no today? we did not win today oh, so the rams won the rams won unfortunately wow dude it's uh, condolences they had a, they had a bunch of things that they were working from the defense they're down a couple key players or and a couple key players are playing injured but like they were in the game, like it was a it was a battle. I honestly. mean, I, I heard, dude, that there was I a, was making shorts, bro. I heard they were in the game. <laughs> it dude. was tied for mo- much of the time. Dude, and you sounded like you were on the edge <laughs> of your seat behind me there. Bro. That's how they play, man. That's how the Browns are. They'll keep you, <laughs> they'll keep you, keep you, keep you, and then they'll let you down the end, dude. Or they'll be like so terrible at the beginning, and then all of a sudden they start playing hard. They like they figure out, oh, we're actually playing this Sunday. Oh shoot, the game started half an hour ago. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then they'll start, and then like they'll keep you in because they'll get closer and closer and closer, and then at the end maybe they'll win, or there'll be a call, some bad call on the refs. We had that uh, that problem a lot in the past, but or our quarterback would just be terrible, or our field goal kicker would miss a freaking extra point. Oh my goodness, he missed today. We could have tied it up at twenties, but no. But he's been better though. I can't be too mad. At so, him. so what's the solution, Coach? Coach Blackman, tell oh, us. Man. Tell us now. Since I see you now, <laughs> you telling people things. <laughs> Low key, I think they've um, they've gotten a lot better over the years. And I know I say that as a Browns fan <laughs> because it's just like always. Maybe dude, next this year. This is so crazy. How passionate about this you are. Dude. Oh man, I love the Browns. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> no, I love them though for real. But I don't know. Like, so we finally got a like a competent head coach. That can like lead our team actually. Like he's been here for almost five years now. Which in the past they couldn't hold a coach for like more than three. <laughs> we actually are one of two teams to ever go completely winless in a season. Winless in the whole season? Yes. And you, you probably remember these years fondly. Oh yeah, it was uh, not too long what ago. What were the years? Tell us the years. Uh two thousand sixteen. Damn, two thousand seventeen. And seventeen? Seven, so it was like one and thirty one through those like two years. Damn. <laughs> yeah, bro. The one year we lost one, the next year we lost all of them. And you stayed a loyal fan throughout, eh? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yo, they almost they almost like messed up too. Like they they wanted to trade like a second round pick for a quarterback who was like barely starting. Wow. And like the other team was like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And so eventually, like, it got to a point where the the general manager was just like, no, I'm going to nix this trade. And he just never filed the paperwork. And then it just never came <laughs> it through. It never came through. Oh, well, you hate that's, to see that's, it. That's, that's, a, that's where we're at. Hopefully <laughs> next season, quarterback, if you're watching, whoever you are, maybe next time they'll be nicer to you. You need to go back to the field, do your <laughs> runs, run into the bags. 
Let's Gio go. Throws. We're on our fourth um, quarterback because of injuries this year. Fourth already? Fourth. That's like really bad. So who are the injuries? We had Deshaun Watson got injured. He was like our starting quarterback. Then his backup got injured. And then our other backup, I guess he's not injured, but he's not really playing. So they got um, Joe Flacco. So, Super so Bowl what's quarterback. going on with all these quarterbacks that they're getting injured like this? Oh man, yeah. What's what's going on here? Is it in the the training, the <clears> supplementation? <throat> is it in the? I mean, if they actually, I think one of them, like he's a rookie, and he was looking okay um, for a rookie, but then the other guy, he's kind of like controversial in himself too, Deshaun Watson. But I don't know. He came in. He kind of had like an attitude of like uh, I don't know. Maybe not he had the attitude. Maybe that's the wrong way to say it. But, like, public perception was, like, this guy was coming in and he's getting $250 million and blah, blah, blah. But he hasn't really, like, showed much, though, in this time. So I think a lot of fans, like, hold that against him. And then he was injured but, like, medically cleared and he didn't didn't play. So people also thought things about that, too. But, you know, I don't know. He, He was at the game. He was dressed up to the nines, bro. Wow. Looking fresh with this lady Looking too. Fresh. In the stands though, I was very confused. Like I thought he would be on the sideline, but hey, I'm not a I'm not an NFL player. So if I was a football player, what position would you put me in? Oh man, you'd be uh you know the guys that carry the sticks? <laughs> <laughs> you look like a stick carrying type, bro. <laughs> yeah. Go f yourself. <laughs> Let's see. Or 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 I can see wait, how how well can you kick a ball? Can you catch? Listen, right. Is there a position for someone mm. to bring the water bottles on? That is, uh, it might be filled, man. Did you ever watch the Water Boy? <laughs> Adam Sandler, the Water Boy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, classic. That's like nineties. Yeah. You wait till they put me on the pitch. <laughs> yeah. You wait till they put me on the pitch. You know, I have the speed of a cheetah. Oh yeah. I have the reflexes of a leopard. Mm. I have the tenacity of a lion. Uh huh. <laughs> yep. Go on. <laughs> the tenacity of a lion, bro, for real. I have the air. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, hold on, bro. Bro, <laughs> don't get me on my bro. Side, bro. <laughs> the tenacity of a lion, bro. Listen, bro. <laughs> I'm a streamline. Oh. That was a great wide shot. I'm crying right now. <laughs> Let me look into the camera. <laughs> I have the wisdom of a tortoise. <laughs> dude, I can't. Like, they are old. They are old, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. <laughs> you know, it's not easy coming from where I come. I always oh. tell people they don't know where I'm from. One of the most legendary things happened once. <laughs> we were watching uh, Planet Earth Africa, and people always mocked me about, you know, like, hey, John, we're watching the African Planet Earth tonight. Oh. <laughs> so I just started clapping. Started clapping. The documentary started. I started hearing the drums. Bro, I was in sync. But I started before they hit play. And then the drums started playing. And then everyone was like, yo, this is some synchronicity right here, bro. (laughs) And then we were there. The African Safari, I think it starts with a meerkat. You know, you can have a meerkat as a pet. I've known some people that have pet meerkats. Wow. Why settle with a kitty cat when you can settle with a mere cat? I don't know if I would like that. They kind of like, they hiss at you, don't they? Of course, they hiss at you. Oh, man. Damn, dude. Oh, man. I, you'd, I be very, you'd be huge to a mere I'd cat, be like, bro. like, yo, I pay the bills in this house. This dude told me the other day he's got a size 13 shoe, bro. Size 13, man. <laughs> you know what they say about the larger foot size? Dude, I don't know what they say, dude. What do they say, Tim? That you um, might need to have bigger socks. Bigger socks? Well, yeah. I need some more socks because this <laughs> damn dog of mine oh, man. has Please. had a new, like, total addiction with my socks. I have... He's eaten all of my socks, bro. Dang. Yo, I seen you had, like, the one toe. Oh, I got like, all my toes are sticking through. 
they were like popping out to say hello, man. Dude, these aren't even so these aren't even old socks, dude. Them, them socks I just wake up spiritual. in the morning. He wakes up and he just decides like he needs to do something. Around six a.m., he gets anxious. Oh man, he finds my socks, dude. So I need to like find a new Ooh, way to man. to hide the socks from the dweez, bro, because. This really isn't working. Dude, we were supposed to be serious today. We've gotten very sidetracked oh, yeah. by your football shenanigans. Oh, yeah. Bro. Yep, very yep. sidetracked by your football shenanigans, this bro. This is true. This is true. You mentioned last week or the week before. You know, this is our third. We're like professionals now. It's like our third podcast. I can't even keep up wow. with us in our, in our posting. But you wanted <laughs> us to play PlayStation 2, baby. PlayStation 2. Yes, sir. And yep. I wanted to ask you about your experience getting a PlayStation 2 because I can so vividly... Remember the day that we got a PlayStation 2? Oh, yeah. It was uh, Black Friday in uh, 1990. Uh, yeah, I don't know what year it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a uh, PlayStation 2. It was just coming out, like, maybe 2003, maybe? Oh, it was 2002. 2000, 2002? Like yeah. Um, yeah, we got it. Like, it was like our our house is like big purchase, like, for the for the house, you know? my four, Me and my three brothers at the time were, like, really excited about having a game system like this. We wow. had like um, I had like a Dreamcast back in the day, but by that time it was already like three years in, and everybody was like, "Oh no, we need to upgrade our systems and get the new things and whatever." But yeah, PlayStation Two that was like one of my favorite ones growing up. I remember mine. I was so sick for Christmas. There was a long period I couldn't eat pork because of this very story. Ooh, because we had some ham, and I got such bad food poisoning. But the next day, my parents had gotten us a uh, PlayStation 2, and I remember it had Ratchet and Crank. Ratchet oh, and yeah. Crank. Yes, yes. That was the game, actually. That um, and Spyro. Wow, I don't know what Spyro is. We had, like, FIFA 2001. Oh, man. Man, who was on that cover? Oh, I can't even remember. <laughs> that was back I, in the day. But then, I mean, yo, I just still remember the machine. I saw the funniest TikTok the other day where... I would do exactly the same thing because these things, sometimes they didn't turn on. Mm. Sometimes you had to smack it a few times. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you had to say some things to it. Sometimes you had to ask it nicely. Please turn on. It sounds like being in a relationship. I love you. Sometimes you you had to shout. Please turn on. Turn on. (laughs) Gosh darn it. (laughs) And I saw this TikTok where this person like hit on and like looked the other way. And I remember yes. my brother and my brother and I used to do that. Sometimes we'd turn it on and we'd not even look at the TV screen. Like we would like turn our heads the other way, do something else, and then you would wait to hear the Yes, yes. That's and sometimes it would turn on, bro, and it would just be like, Yes. Yep, yep. Otherwise you'd be waiting for that noise and it just never goes and it goes <laughs> It's just like the menu. I can't remember. I that was the first um Formula One game I got was like Formula One 2006, I believe. Mm. That was such an awesome game. And Tiger Woods, we used to have, I used to play a lot of sports games. Same. I've actually. never been too much into the like shooter games or like the Call of Duty games or RPGs. I've always liked, <clears throat> I always liked sports games. I had cricket, we had rugby, we had all the FIFAs. We always loved the FIFAs. As far as like other games, I played the Guitar Heroes naturally. Mm. I really like the Guitar Heroes. Um, those were fantastic. I played the Shadow of Mordor, which I thought was a great game. I've played Minecraft. I've played GTA and I've played Red Dead Redemption. Oh, yeah. GTA was nice. Mm-hmm. I was definitely into the sports games as well. I'd play uh, NBA 2003. Wow, 2003. NBA this 2000, is not even 2K. Very yeah, specific, 2003. Also 2002, but... Yeah, 2003. That had Jason Kidd. Um, yeah, he was on the cover. Um, the Brown or no, the Cavs. It, it was whole, like 2003, it's 2002 season. So we didn't have LeBron the season right before the, the his rookie year. But I would always rock with them. Uh, Kobe and Shaq were on the Lakers team at that time too. Yo, that they were stacked. Crazy. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, it's so hard to defend those two. Derek Fisher as well. Once he was, I think that was 2004. Um, but yeah. I would also play, um, let's see, Midnight Club. What's that? Midnight Club. It's like a racing game. Oh, <clears throat> I like driving games. Driving too. through the city. It's um, like Need for Speed? A little bit like more cartoon, I would say. Compared oh, wow. to even more cartoon than co- Need for compared Speed? To, could, compared to it. Yeah. It was like it was kind of like the, the first like open world driving game. Um, but yeah. 
a lot of fun. A lot of hours spent on that one. I There's bet. also this old game that I don't think a lot of people know about because it's not really popular. Not a huge like game company that made it, but Hypersonic Extreme. Never heard it's of it. Very. It's like a very niche little thing, but it's like basically basically like spaceship racing and all the tracks would be like these huge long things through the valleys and through the deserts and stuff, but like the tracks you would kind of like cruise and like speed through like these places or whatever. No wheels or anything, just boost. <laughs> You're just like floating through and all these like cars are just... Sounds crazy. crazy. A lot of fun though, like really beautiful visuals. Um... But yeah, oh, Madden. All the Maddens, like, back in the day. Us. We used to rock um, the mini games, uh, Russian Attack and Passing. Wow. You would, like, pass through the rings. As a quarterback, you would just drop back with Peyton Manning or who who they have at that time. I don't even know who. Man, that's been so long. Michael Vick. Michael <laughs> Vick was probably there. Yeah, Michael Check Vick was um, 04. That was, like, yeah. on top of me. But anyway, you would drop back and you would just, like, throw throw your ball through these rings. As your receivers running down for Madden, NFL. A lot of fun. A lot of hours. So you lost a lot of hours to that. A lot of hours, man. Yeah. I would need for speed the credit for teaching me how to drive in hey. America. For real? Oh, for real. Wow. I got Formula One and I got a G29 and I got a whole setup so I could play my racing games. And then uh, my friend and I got uh, Need for Speed, the one in Miami. And uh, we basically spent a lot of time playing. But that taught me how to drive on the right-hand side of the road. Wow. That's interesting. Because I was always driving on the left-hand side. But, dude, there's a big game announcement coming out on the 6th of December. Did you know about it? Oh, yeah. I feel like we have to use this opportunity to talk about GTA 6 that's coming out. Or at least the trailer's coming out. I'm excited. You see, you hate to see it because, I mean, you guys have a a PS5. I don't have a PS5. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to get a PS5 to play this game probably. Oh, yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. It's time to upgrade, man. It's 2023. We need that 5, bro. Yeah, I need to upgrade as well. I'm very excited. I don't know if they're going to be able to top Red Dead Redemption, though, for me. I thought Red Dead Redemption was just too awesome. Mm. I don't know, man. This one's been in the works for like 10 years. It should be. I don't know, man. I'm excited to like see the reboot and see where they go, man. Because like I feel like GTA 5, we've been working on that one for a while. I feel like you and I need to get the game and get some characters and role play. Oh, yeah. I feel like we need to go onto the worlds and the onlines and play because I'm probably going to suck. I don't know how good you are, but I'm definitely going to suck. But I can go in there and troll the jazz out of people. Oh, yeah. I like driving around. I just want us to go on there and, and just grief people. Go in there and, uh, you know, rob a bank and, uh, you know, run over some pedestrians <laughs> <laughs> in GTA. <laughs> but we should do it as like adults. We should do it like in a responsible way because we want to teach kids to be respectful young kids. Oh yeah. I go up and say, hi, how are you doing? So Tim, I don't know if you remember, but in the process of trying to make one of our early podcasts that never came to be, Mm. we spoke about the origin story of how you and I actually met. And I think it's important for us to share with the dream makers how you and I came to know each other. And uh, well, I think it's probably more, I can tell my first part of the story is that I have a South African friend who lives in Los Angeles, dear friend of mine. And uh I was actually fortunate enough to stay with this guy the first time I came to check out Los Angeles. And throughout my time, he had some roommates and one of his roommates was moving out. And then I met Tim because Tim was moving in. But I would like Tim to tell us what led Tim to there. Oh, yeah. So I had just made that move from Detroit, right? And so I came out here. I didn't really have like a place. I had one spot in mind and it was downtown L.A. And Yo, I came, downtown, dude? Yeah, yeah. What were you going to do downtown, dude? Oh, man. The place was actually pretty dope. I So I had I came out like a couple months before to scope out some places. I was doing like the apartment searching and stuff. And I found a spot downtown LA. Saw it like during the day. It looked nice. And then I came back afterwards. <laughs> no, you know, during the day. <laughs> during the day, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a big difference, yo. So I came down after uh, making that trip. Went to, um, lived at a few different spots. Started downtown LA. Um, and I got there and I was like, I didn't feel the vibe, man. It was just, it was, actually, man, it was a little scary to be honest. Yeah. A little scary is the understatement. <laughs> That's a scary place, bro. Yeah, man. I was, um, 
you know, helicopters flying through and they got these tall buildings. So like the sound just echoes and echoes through the streets on the streets, bro. It's just craziness. You've got, man, and it's unfortunate, but you've got like tents everywhere. You've got, unfortunately, you've got homeless people walking around. You've got people who are going through mental, mental crisis. And it's just like so prevalent. It's like, it doesn't have like a safe feeling. And I need that in the spot. I need to be able to walk out my house and not feel threatened in any sort of way. Like I need to, when I leave my house, I could go down the street. I could go and I could say hi to my neighbors, whatever, even if they don't want to talk, you know, but like (laughs) downtown LA, I did not feel that vibe. So I tried out another spot, went to Santa Monica for a bit, went to Hermosa beach for a while. Wow. You sounds like you've lived in the lavish life. It was cool. It was cool. In the lavish life, Santa Monica. Oh yeah, you know I might have to get down there one of these days. You might, you might have to get on the on the beachfront <laughs> down there. <laughs> Got to get down street, there, baby. Right? It was nice, man. Pacific Park too. Oh man, I love like amusement parks. So like living, I could I could definitely see myself living by that place again, man. But Hermosa Beach though, that that place is paradise for real. That's where I've never I really been liked. to Hermosa Beach before. Oh man, it's beautiful, beautiful. A lot of history there. A lot of jazz history. But anyway. um, I was just, yeah, I was just kind of um, testing, you know, some of my connects out here. And I was like, you know, where can I find a spot? Like, I've been looking and hasn't been fruitful. And eventually one of the guys was like, you know, call up my friend. I think he's about to move out. Um, I'll introduce you guys. I'll give you his contact, whatever. So I call up the guy. He's a really cool dude. He's a sax guy, saxophone player from the West Coast. And he was rocking it, man. He was like, like instantly, like me and him had like a, like a good um, connection and so, like, I got introduced to um, the roommates there, and that's where I met your acquaintance. Yeah, the spot, you know, it was just, like, it was very peaceful. Um, it's a nice area, especially, like, super walkable. Very walkable. You live on a street with beautiful palm trees. It's got this awesome, like, the first night, you guys have this little balcony. Yes. And if you look down the street, it's just lined with uh, palm trees. So beautiful. Very Los Angeles looking. It could almost be, like, a picture from a magazine that people see of Los Angeles. So beautiful. And the mountains in the Guys background. Guys got Trader Joe's right there. Trader Joe's is, is like two blocks away. It's wonderful. <laughs> you can walk walk anywhere you need to. The banks are around the corner. Um, you got a shopping and, center nearby? Yes, shopping center. We got Target. We got the whole, yeah, we got the whole thing, bro. There's a mall not too far away. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. Especially like as a first spot in LA. I think I could, I don't think I could have done it better. I don't think so either. Yeah. Well, then I got dragged over to meet you one night and we basically watched your roommate play VR games all night. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what it was. Yeah. He, um, yeah, he, he was telling me about this, uh, friend from South Africa. I'm like, okay, okay, let's link, you know, like he was a musician as well. And I'm like, okay, let's, let's do it. And so you came over and we were, we were watching him like put on his like VR helmet. He was playing that game when you have to like hit the notes like Guitar Hero. Oh yeah. Uh, Whatever that's called. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't remember that what it's game. Yeah. You know what game we're talking about. Yep. He was like ninjaing in front of us, like really <laughs> feeling himself like he was doing a good job. And I'm like, bro, you're about to hit the vase. <laughs> <laughs> the TV is about to get slashed. <laughs> but he told me that you were like a director. Yes. I think yes. that's why I was super interested in meeting you because I've always been hoping to link with a person that was a talented director. So I was very interested in meeting you. I think your roommate actually showed me some stuff before we met. Mm-hmm. Um, he came over to my place and showed me some of your All Flats videos. Yes. And yes. I thought they were so awesome. So I was so excited to meet you because in my mind, it's so funny. I think I was like coming to meet you. You know me. I always come and I want to meet people and get a feel and see. But I think I knew you from the first time I met you. I think I knew I wanted to do something with you. Hey. It was a weird thing that I had. I just had a, I had an idea that I was like, yo, this dude's a cool dude and I like what he makes. Hey, hey, yes, yes. So <laughs> I, I think very early on, I dropped the idea to you that like I wanted to make a, like make a movie or something, which I've wanted to do for a long time. Yes. And I don't know when the exact moment was, but we were, we were on your balcony and I think I came out to you and I just said, hey man, I have this idea to like do this thing. And I've kind of like tried to start writing a script, which is totally, the script has totally changed now and the story is totally different. But I was like, yo, Tim, would you like to come and help me make like a movie? Yes, yes. And, you know, we just like put some thought to it. And I think we're both creative enough um, to where we're able to bounce ideas off each other. And yeah, it just kind of started this cool collaboration and friendship, man. Yeah, we'd right? always just get the same pizza. Tim would come over and we'd <laughs> order pizza and like oh, yeah. we'd start working. And then 
um this year we really started probably after after may beginning of june we really started getting together way more and more and it, it almost evolved into the wild tsi it, not almost it did evolve into wild tsi indeed yeah and that was kind of like i've had this wild tsi idea for such a long time and i've always been waiting to execute it and have somebody to to build it with and it just made like the perfect sense at the right time so here we are we and that's it. how we met and now we have dreams of building a, a production company that does not just music and films and 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 creative stuff but we also want to do our best to give back to communities and to help people and to bring light to people that we believe deserve an opportunity to be seen and heard um and this mission of ours is like continually evolving every week um i'm excited to announce that i'm going back to business school this coming year Tim and I are, are, are hoping to really just equip ourselves over the coming year. We we talk about this coming year with so much excitement because I think we both think it's going to be a year for so much growth and improvement and investment in ourselves and learning how to run a successful company as creatives in 2023, 2024 and beyond. Yes. Yes, so, yes. I'm just really thrilled to be here with you, bro. And I'm really grateful to have this platform and to be in this room with you. Even though there's no one on the other side of the screen, I'm super, super blessed to have you in my life and to be taking on this mammoth task with you. And uh, if anyone's made it to this part of the video, I think this is the perfect time for us to wrap it up. Uh, but just to say, Tim, yes, I love you and I appreciate you. And uh, Dream Makers, we have a lot of big stuff coming in 2024. And we appreciate you guys rocking with us. And we appreciate you guys liking and subscribing, leaving comments, telling people about us, spreading the love. Um, we have a long way to go, but uh, we are actively working every day and every time we make something to get better. And we hope, if anything, that, that can be some encouragement to you in your lives to just actively work to get better at something today, even if it's 0.0.3% of 0.1% uh, better than you were yesterday. At least you're working and you're getting better. And that's the goal is to always get better yep, with yep. every step. So uh, Small steps turn into big steps eventually. I, I know we're going to make something, so, some life-changing, life-changing, life-altering, some some type of content that's really, just really going to inspire the people. So I'm really blessed and grateful to have you too, man, on this mission. Appreciate Let's get that, it, bro. bro. Let's get it. Well, I guess we'll see you guys in the next one. Eh? Peace. Peace. I was thinking about it. You know the guys that have, um, they have like a, they have like the backpack, but the backpack is like a bucket and it has some beer. I could see that for you, like bear here, bear. <laughs> <laughs>